Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Amen. Let's go ahead and get us a song book tonight. And you want the one that says church hymn. Any other book don't have it in there. Amen. Page 317. Now, if you don't know it, by the time we get done with it, you ought to know it. Amen. Amen. So, this, this is what we call a church congregation practice. Amen. How, how many of you have never heard this song? Love Likes the Way. Put your hand down. Huh? All right. So, ladies, y'all pick up on it when we get to the chorus. The guy started off, his love likes the way. Ladies will chime in, his love like. So just catch up. Yep. Amen. Sing aloud. If you can't do nothing else, holler. It all mess together. Amen.
right. Good evening. Amen. amen. Boy, that's some mighty fine singing. Amen. That was a good practice for the congregation. Amen. amen. Thank God for the love of God. Amen. Lighten the way. Amen. Boy, it's good to be saved. Good to be in church tonight. Amen. amen. Looking forward to seeing what the Lord's got for us tonight. Amen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take up our offering. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, do remember Brother Cecil getting over his wrist operation. Uh, remember Braxton's granddaddy with cancer. Um, Braxton was just telling me that he's talking to his mama and his mama had some places taken off of her head that may be skin cancer that they're sending off to get checked out. So remember that. Amen. Uh, remember our lost loved ones. Amen. 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 Thank God for Jesus. Amen. The blood. I'm glad I'm saved here tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to go through a lot of things if the Lord don't come back. And we keep living. We're going to go through some, some good times and some bad times. But I'll tell you what, I'd rather be saved Amen. going through any of it. Amen. Amen. Being saved makes the difference. Yeah. So I appreciate the Lord uh, tonight. I appreciate the family of God. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you, God, for loving us. God, thank you for our church. God, thank you for our church family. And God, I just, uh, God, thank you for your goodness on our life. God, I pray, Lord, for these prayer requests. God, that you'd have your way in each and every one of them. God, help us, Lord, to grow in grace and understanding of the Word of God. Lord, help us to be a better example. Uh, Lord, for your glory. Lord, that we might win others uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you, God, for every day, every month, every year, every mile that you've brought us down life's road, God. Thank you, Lord, for being here again tonight. God, I pray that you'd uh, take this money, bless it, use it for your glory. Forgive us, Lord, for where we failed you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. special treat for y'all before we get into the word tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, this Friday, four o'clock, we're going to be pulling out to go to Shining Light for camp meeting. We're carrying all the youth up to sing in the youth choir for the camp meeting. Everybody's looking forward to it up that way. You know how Brother Danny is, brother. He'll stoke the fire, so... Y'all better come with bells ringing, be prayed up, and ready to sing. Now, don't come up there in your flesh, you know. Amen. Come up there with God on you so we can be a blessing to them people. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be leaving out of, there, out of here at 4 o'clock Friday. Try your best to be here ready to pull out at 4 o'clock. That only gives us a 30-minute window to get up, and, and we have been known to pull in late. Amen. We have been known, so we're going to try. I, I know me already thinking 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock is three hours. It takes two and a half. No way we can make it. And so we help out of my unbelief. Amen. So we're going to try to get there 4 o'clock. Here's what you need to bring. Everybody that is spending the night, Brother Danny and them have two houses that they have recently purchased. And boy, they're excited to put us up in those two houses. I'm excited too. We don't have to ride all the way from the motel and come. If we want to walk over to the church, it's right there beside the church. You know, it's, it's just going to be good. But they're excited. They're getting them fixed up for us. I already got them fixed up. But if you're spending the night, 
You need a sleeping bag, a towel, your deodorant, Amen. and soap. And that, that's just an added bonus. Uh, you need a sleeping bag and a towel. Amen. They, they won't have, I think they'll have some towels, but a sleeping bag, if you want to be warm, it's supposed to be 30 something up there, I think, tonight or tomorrow night. So it's going to be, um, it'll be chilly. So you need your sleeping bag. Yes, sir. Why well, don't we don't have a sleeping bag? You got a cover? Bring you a cover. Maybe a sheet and a cover. Well, you ain't got to have a sheet, but you might be on a, on a cold air mattress. Amen. So a sheet and a cover. And somebody might be able to help this young man out if they got something, uh, an extra sleeping bag. Amen. I got one. 15 bucks, I'll let you use mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking with you. Amen. Uh, but we'll, we'll make, if you, if you can't get that, you let me know. We'll bring a, we'll bring an extra sleeping bag for you. Amen. So if you got any questions, please see me after church. We're going to try to have, try to have a meeting on Wednesday to nail everything down because we'll be pulling out. I know some people are probably going to drive separate. The crowd that's going with us and go, uh, we'll go uh, in vans and we'll be up there Friday night. You are welcome to come up and drive back. Amen. And there's a crowd of us um, that is going to stay over Saturday night. So that's Friday night, Saturday night. If something's going on and you need to make arrangements, you want to stay Friday night, but you need to come back Saturday night. Uh, that's fine, just talk to me, we'll work it out, or maybe you can drive yourself, however you wanna do it. But please get on the sign-up sheet in the back so we can give Brother Danny his church a head count and it'll let us know how we need to do our driving arrangements. If you need any help with towels or sleeping bag, please let me know, we, we don't want that to keep you from going. We want everybody to go, amen? Amen, all right. Where's my twins at? It's their birthday week. Month. Come on, girls. Uh -uh. Amen. Got the whooping stick ready. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119, 105. Amen. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Amen. Ephesians 4 32. Mm -hmm. She gets a prize for that second one, too, don't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. <laughs> Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Amen. 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 Good job. Good job. All right. Does anybody else from Children's Church have their verse memorized? Anybody? Children's Church. All right, you get you get candy if you say your verse. Still nothing. Good job, girls. All right, y'all memorize your verse. They didn't uh, print them out on the paper just to waste paper now. Amen. Amen. Uh, for the for the children's church, the ages four to eleven that goes to children's church, they're given a memory verse. Which thank God for that, man. Boy, we need to feed our youngest the Word of God. Parents, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, whoever they come with, y'all try to make sure that they, and they may have stuck with me, if they like Ronnie Wayne when he was eight years old, I probably crumbled it up, stuck it in my pocket, and you never seen it. But try to check in on that, make sure, help them to memorize that verse. It's going to help them. It's going to help them. Amen. Hey, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It might be the difference in that young and living a good, pure, clean life one day versus living old, sinful, dirty, rotten life. Amen. So help them hide the word of God in their heart. All right. Children's church crowd. Come up here in singing gear. 
Amen. Singing gear. All right, they got a song they've been practicing. They had one last last week they sang. They sang eight verses of Jesus Loves Me last week. That code must have went through here this morning. <laughs> Loudest singer in the adult choir. He's out. It's all right, buddy. sacrifice their time, put forth some effort to help some kids. Amen. Right, amen. Boy, I thank God for the grown-ups that helped me in my life when I was little. Yeah. Amen. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for, for grown folks willing to put up with aggravating youngins. Amen. amen. I'm not saying that in a mean way. I'm telling you I was aggravating when I was little. Amen. amen. I was. I appreciate the Lord and appreciate Christian people that love people. Amen. All right, uh, take your Bible and turn to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Y'all act like y'all as young as ain't aggravated. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad when the preacher knows that you're being deceptive and lying. Yeah. Amen, I know some of y'all as young as. Yeah. Amen. Y'all know mine too. Is that what is that the tone I heard in that Matthew? Amen. I know yours too. <laughs> Amen. John chapter 17. Uh, Lord willing, we're gonna start this study. I'm gonna try to do just an introductory. We've been dealing with uh, the word of God above all and honoring the word of God. And I think God helped us out a pretty good bit understanding the value that the Lord puts on the word of God. Amen. So I appreciate the Lord, appreciate that study that we had. I'm going to try this, and uh, I desire your prayers. It's something that we really need to know. Um, listen, we're just, not, we're just not a church on the side of the road that tries to have more entertainment than everybody, and that's a church that makes you feel better and welcome. We want that stuff. We want a, a welcoming spirit. We want to be uh, have good hospitality. I mean, we want to be a friendly church and all that, but that's not, that is not why the church is established. Amen. Um, that's a lot of additives that God has blessed us with to try to uh, be a place where people can come and get help and get fed. Yeah. But the church has a purpose. The church has a purpose, and, all, and not only, it, it, the, the church is biblical. Right. It's biblical. And if you're going to have a church or a church is going to be started or founded or a church is going to continue to be in operation, if it changes uh, pastors or leadership, it still ought to be uh, biblical. Amen. It ought to be conducted according to the Bible. And if it's not, it's not a true Bible church. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on in our world today that people call religion, that people call the church, that people say is of God, and it's got Jesus' name on it, but it is so far away from the truth and the Bible that it's pitiful. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. God give us, God didn't leave us in the dark when it comes to how the church ought to conduct itself. Right. Amen. Amen. And the way the church ought to be operated. And so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, if you want to title this, this study, maybe Baptist Distinctives. Baptist Distinctives. Yeah, you're looking at me like that. Uh, yeah, that's right. There's a reason why we're Baptists. Amen. 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 If there wasn't, I'd be non-denominational. Or I might go hook up with the holiness. Yeah. Or I might be down at the Mormon church. That's pretty big these days, the deliverance church. They're getting delivered. Amen. Uh, there's a reason why. You, you know when, when we decided that or, or, or finally realized that God had started a work with us here about three years ago, two and a half years ago, whatever. Uh, finally realized that, man, we got a church, you know, and God's, God's doing something. I mean, even in that, that barn that we were starting in, I've seen people get saved, seen teenagers get right with God. I've seen marriages get help, get put back together. Hey, people get off of drugs. Hey, it wasn't, it, we wasn't delivering them. Hey, man, we was preaching the gospel to them. And God's helping people. And when we realized that, that the Lord was doing something with us, and we were going to name man, I started catching heat. I never thought it. I started catching heat. Right out the gate on what we were going to do as far as a stand that we were going to take. Yeah. I had, listen, bro, I had more than one person come to me. We're getting ready to name the church. More than one person come to me and say, are you going to put Baptist on the sign? Right. And it wasn't making sure I was going to put Baptist on the sign. It was, don't you think that will offend some people yeah. if we put Baptist on the sign? That's the world we're living in today. Right. Oh, yeah. That's the world we're living in today. Nobody wants to offend anybody. Yeah. Nobody wants to take a stand and say, hey, bless God, we're going, this is where we're at right here. We ain't changing. We, we ain't changing colors. We ain't going to be a chameleon and blend in with everybody. Hey, bless God, this is what we believe. I believe you ought to stand for what you believe in. And believe in where you stand, amen. And so that's where we decide. And catch heat. Had people, when we, when we got ready to we got ready to start that thing, had people to, to approach me about the type of music we was going to sing in our church. I mean, right out the gate, down there in the middle, we started ordering old hymns. Had, had a man, had a preacher out of Richmond County come sit down with me in my church, our church, and want to question me on contemporary music. Right. Well, what's the problem? What, what's so bad about this? Yeah. And so I had to have that discussion. You know what they wanted us to do? They wanted us to roll over. Yeah. That's what they wanted us to do. Yeah. Hey, drop your standards. Drop your name. Hey, don't worry about Hey, let's just don't offend anybody. Let's all come together. We can't all come together. Right. You can't all come together. If you do, you're going to be against this Bible. Yep. And that is why I'm trying to do this study right here so we can get educated on why we are what we are. Amen. You tell people I go down to Southridge Baptist Church, that just flows the plane up now. Southridge Baptist Church. Yeah. Where we go. And people don't even bat an eye at that. Right. And if somebody said, well, what? Won't you go down to the Methodist Church? You probably wouldn't even know what to tell them. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. And so I hope that I hope what we're going to deal with probably over the next a couple of months or so, we're going to help on that. I just want to kind of do an introductory uh, on this right now. And you can call it Baptist distinctness or why I'm a Baptist or whatever you want to do. Uh, but we'll try, to, we'll try to get into it, try to be a help to you. Uh, by, by way of introduction, I'd like to tell you this, that Baptists, independent Baptists, are not Protestants. You know, uh, my buddy was in the military, and when they get a dog tag, well, back then they get a dog tag, and they'd either have Catholic or Protestant on it. Yeah. I don't know what else they might would have on it, but, but anybody that ain't a Catholic for be a Protestant. Well, that's, a, that's, not, that's not the truth. That's a lie. Right. Amen. Amen. Protestant means they protest. Right. Amen. A, a Baptist, an independent Baptist, we never were part of the Catholic Church. Right. We never were part of the Reformation. We didn't have to, you know, Martin Luther and them, when they, when, they, when they backed out and started kicking against what the Catholic Church was doing, amen, and got tired of it, they, they come out of it, they protested against it, and they called themselves the Reformers, yeah. the Reformation period, if you will. And so they were trying to reform the church. Well, we never were Reformers, we never were Protestants because we never were part, we never went into Catholic Church, oh, yeah. amen. We, Bible believers stayed true to the Bible. And they lost their heads for it too, brother. Their families were drowned in ponds and drowned in rivers. They were burnt at the stake. Hey, they were sown asunder. They were boiled in hot oil and grease. 
all kinds, brother, we could go on and on. Get you a Fox's Book of Martyrs and, and read it on how, I'm talking about people that believe that Bible. Man. Stuck with the stuff. When all this new stuff come along, they, just like it is today, it ain't no different. All this new stuff come along, you know, we're the idiots now. Because the whole world's going that way. And we say, we're going to stick with this stuff. Well, what's wrong with contemporary music? Why don't you just drop your, your name and just be a non-denominational so nobody gets offended and everybody will feel welcome down Because everybody ain't welcome down here. Amen. That hurt, didn't it? Amen. Everybody's welcome if they're going to hook up with the book. Yeah. But they ain't welcome if they're going to come down and do the things they do down there where they're at and try to push it over on us. Right. Amen. We're going to stand with the book before we stand with the world. Amen. 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 And so we've never been reformers or Protestants. Amen. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. You know, you know what the Protestant church did? They come out of the Catholic church. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Now, they know how to be saved. They know Christ alone. But a lot of the things and the exercise and the practices that they do in their churches are not Bible. Right. Amen? Yeah. Not Bible. What they did, they're, they're like, here's a good way to view uh, Protestant churches. And Protestant churches, I mean Presbyterian. It's founded by John Calvin. Right. Presbyterian Church. Do your research on it if you want to. John Calvin, he's the, he's the, he's the author or founder, if you will, of this uh, Calvinism. Right. Calvinism. The tulip doctrine. Right. Yeah. Irresistible grace. Right. In other words, there's an election of people that's going to be saved and God knows who that people is and they can't resist it. They're going to be saved and there's people that's never going to be saved. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And some of them don't even believe in witnessing. Yeah. They don't believe in tracts and evangelizing. Yeah. They are, God already knows who's going to be saved, so, so man's will has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Your will don't have anything to do with it. That's what the Calvinists teach. Oh, yeah. Amen? That's, John, that's the Presbyterian Church. That came out of the Catholic Church. Yeah. They're, 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 they're Protestants. Mm -hmm. Amen? You got the Presbyterians. You got the Methodists. Founded by John Wesley. Amen. And a lot of these practices, I go on and on. The Lutheran Church, founded by Martin Luther. Right. You know, here's, here's what they believe. I said, we stick to the book. We're going to try our best to stick to that book, be Bible-believing Baptists. Yeah. That's who come. You know, that name was pinned on us. Baptists. We were Anabaptists. You know what Anabaptists meant? This Catholic Church back in about 300 A.D., about the 3rd century, they come up having world power. They wanted, they wanted not only physical power, but they wanted spiritual power. Yeah. They seen how the church would be persecuted and three, four, five thousand 5,000 people be added to the church. Man, that's supernatural power. They wanted that. Yeah. And you know what they did? They took Christianity under the Roman government, made it a state church. All right, here's Christianity now. We see all y'all Jesus followers and y'all people who want to follow Jesus and the Word of God. Well, now here's how you're going to do it. And if you don't do baptism like we say we, you're going to do it, if you don't do the Eucharist like we say we're going to do it, if you don't follow, uh, if you don't found your church under papal authority, under the authority of the Pope, then you're going to be sown asunder. You're going to be burned at the stake. And that's who killed us. That's who killed our forefathers was the stinking Catholic Church and the Pope and the rest of them. All they've done this day and time is made peace with everybody and said, all right, it's all right. We'll all live in unity. They're trying to bring a one world religion in. Everything's up. They still feel the same way. I just finished a job for a, a staunch Roman Catholic, Canadian, and he told me all his life they were, it was put in their head, you don't mingle, don't do business, don't touch Protestant people. He called me a Protestant, yeah. and I had to straighten him out on what we were. Amen? Amen. We never went into the Catholic Church. Wow. Bunch of stinking devils, and your buddy might be a Catholic, but I'm not, I'm not saying what they're rooted, what they're founded on is devilish and satanic. Wow. Yeah. Amen. God knew what he's going to do tonight. Amen. He knew. He knows who needs to hear this. Wow. Amen. Amen. And then, then Luther, you know, what they, you know what they believe as far as baptism goes? It's the Lutherans. If you go to the Methodist church, and bless God, listen, you might have got saved in the Methodist church. I'm trying to educate you on why we're Baptists and why we're not Protestant. They brought a lot of that stuff. They're like first cousins to the Catholic church. Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopal. A.M.E. Zion, the African Methodist Episcopal Church up here on the, in, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> they all, listen, they all come out, am I turning red? <laughs> they all come out 
of the Catholic Church. Here's how, here's how, here's how, here's how the Lutherans practice baptism. They practice baptism by pouring water on the infant's heads. We don't believe in infant baptism. You know who came up with that? The Catholic Church. They instituted that. And that, did I say we got the name Anabaptist pinned on us? Here's the reason why. Because the Catholic Church, way back in 300, when they started, they started passing all these laws. They said, all right, here's Christianity. Here's one of many, 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 many laws. They get you the book called The Trail of Blood. Trail of Blood. It'll get you a good history on it. Read it. Here's what they said. They said, hey, we believe in infant baptism. Hey, if you if people's got to be baptized in order to go to heaven, that's a lie. Right. You don't have to man on the cross to thief hanging on the cross to get baptized. Right. And Jesus told him, He said, "Today thou shalt be with me in paradise." Right. Amen? Amen. That's what the Bible says. But they said we're going to see. They just want to feel good about themselves. Make sure everybody goes to heaven. Y'all drink wine and 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 and, and be pedophiles and mess with little boys and little girls all you want to. As long as you get baptized, you can go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. And so they sprinkle them babies. And they tell Bible believers, if you if you go against this, we're going to cut your head off. Right. If you go against this, we're going to burn y'all's houses down. That's what they tell them. Yeah. Yep. And you know what they still do? You know what they do in the Lutheran church? The Methodist church and the rest of them? They sprinkle little babies' heads. Right. And here's what they say. They say that that sprinkling in that head, on that head create, it gives that child faith. Right. It puts faith in that young's heart. And whenever they become 12 or 13 years old, the age of accountability, then they have what they call a confirmation. One day they'll show outwardly what the Lord done to them when there was a little infant and that water dropped on their head. And that's exactly what they say. Amen. Look it up. Go ask them. They'll tell you that. They ain't ashamed of what they believe. That's why they got $5 million cathedrals. Because people bought that stuff. Amen. The Lutheran church. The Lutheran church. That's the same thing with the you know what the Episcopal Church is. They're they're part uh, Church of England and part Catholic Church. Got one of them right up here by Food King where it used to be. The Episcopal Church looks like a witch's den up there. Yep. The Episcopal Church, Amen. We're not Protestants. Wow. We're Baptists, and there's a reason. And if you're going to stick to Baptist distinctives, which is this book where we get our distinctives at, you're going to be persecuted for. Amen. You're going to be persecuted for. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that AME Zion Church, y'all, y'all like that, don't you? African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, founded in 1796 by African Americans who left the White John Street Methodist Church in New York City to form a black church, known as the Freedom Church, for its efforts to free slaves. Some of their members was Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass. All have roots. Every one of these that I know, that I named have roots to the Catholic Church. The Protestants have root to the Catholic Church. We do not have roots in the Catholic Church. Amen. We never entered the Catholic Church. We always stuck with the Word of God. Now, there's been some traitors along the way. Brother, we're seeing them depart from the faith right now. The Bible says, in the last days, some's going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Yeah, there's going to be a falling away, and we're seeing it today. Oh, yeah. Doctrines of devils. That means teachings of devils. Yeah. Seducing spirits. Yep. Amen. I'm like Brother Danny said, Brother, I don't care if you see an arm grow back. You stick with the book. Amen. That's what Peter and them said when they went up on the Mount of Transfiguration and they seen everything they see. Hey, they said, even though we've seen it with our own eyes, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Yeah. You better nail down what you do according to that book, yeah. not according yeah. to what you've seen. Amen. Yeah. Hey, you might see something. You might experience it. I don't doubt these people. I know one independent Baptist preacher that said this. He thought them boys over there delivering people in Tennessee just like they're doing up here on the other end of the street. That's right, I said it. Hey, he said, he's blind. This independent Baptist preacher is blind. He said, I would go up there and get in line just to see what's going on, but I'm scared they might be able to heal me. He wasn't picking either. You think the devil ain't got no power. Brother, he's got a dog and pony show going on this day and time. Oh, yeah. And you know what he's doing? He's luring people. And they're going by what they see and what they experience. Oh, God, I've seen a 90-foot Jesus. And I've seen this. It don't matter what you've seen. Peter said, I have a, a more sure word of prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. You better stick to that book. If it's wrong, then God's wrong. And everything's wrong. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You remember when You remember when Moses went over there to Pharaoh? And all the soothsayers and magicians and all that come out there and, 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 and Moses threw a stick down and it turned into a snake. Uh, yeah. 
And here's the, the God of this world, the devil, Pharaoh. You know what his boys did? They threw a stick down and it turned into a snake. Yeah. You tell me the devil can't do something, brother. Right. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yeah. I'm talking about right now. Into an angel of light. Sitting on the front pew with a tie on, amen. Teaching Sunday school and preaching. And the Bible says that Satan also, if Satan's transformed into an angel of light, his ministry, no more before his ministers also has transformed into ministers of righteousness. Mm -hmm. These boys going around preaching Jesus, delivering people, yeah. throwing their sticks down and turning into snakes. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Hey, don't go by what you see and what you experience. You go by the book. Amen. And that's the reason why we're Baptists. We're trying to stick with the book. Amen. We're going to be persecuted for it. We're not going to be popular. We'll probably end up small enough. God is blessed. That's why it amazes me to be in a Bible-believing church and, and God bless us with the crowd he's blessed us with. Yeah. But that ain't popular. Amen. Bible-believing church is normally, I mean, if you're running 25 heads, you're probably running a good crowd. This day and time ain't your brother season. I mean, it, it's just, there's far few between God. God's done something special with us. Amen. I don't think I've compromised. Nice. Amen. I don't believe I've compromised. Amen. I don't think I'm being deceived. Amen. Listen, Baptists were never in the Catholic Church, so we didn't come out of it. Right. Amen. I want you to learn why you're Baptists. So here's a word I want to introduce you to. Some of you may not have ever heard it. Maybe you have. How many's ever heard of the ecumenicable movement? Ecumenicable movement. That word means the world coming together religiously. Amen? That's what we're going to talk about here just for a little bit, and I'll try to be done. I was just going to give you an introduction, but y'all like the AME Zion part too good, so I dug a little deeper right there. Amen? Uh, that's what they say. Saying amen to a preacher is like saying sick them to a dog. Yeah. Amen? amen. Listen, <laughs> listen, there's a dangerous attack on true biblical doctrine, and it's really ramped up over the last 20 years. And this is what it is. This is what it is. Ecumenism. Or short for ecumenicable. Ecumenism. Here's what it means. A movement. A movement promoting unity between different churches and groups. You listen to me? That don't seem harmless. I mean harmful. Are y'all in John chapter 17? Yep. I'm not. Amen. John chapter 17. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John 17. Let me, let me read you some of the stuff that they'll, that they'll read. John chapter 17. We're talking about an ecumenical movement. Listen, by God's grace, and here's where you need to be at with your life too. You're to say, by God's grace, I'll always stick with the book. I always want to be found faithful to the word of God. He has left us with a holy book that's got holy instructions and with no doubt tells us how we ought to live, how we ought to conduct our lives, how we ought to be separate, and how we ought to conduct the church and its practices. And you ought to draw a line in the sand and say, bless God, till Jesus comes, I'm going to stand with the book. Man. I'm going to stand with the book. Hey, listen, there's people taking, hey, listen, I, I, I know preachers that's took Baptists off their church signs. And they say, I'm, I'm tired of being a Baptist. Them Baptists, they corrupt and, and they hide stuff and they do doing this. Hey, I agree with all that. Amen? Amen. They, there are some corrupt Baptist churches. That's right. Yeah. But that don't make the Baptist distinctives in that book wrong. Hey, here's what you ought to do. Here's what we do. When you preach the hell out of them that ain't acting right, yeah. might be hiding yeah. stuff and yeah. having these sexual misconducts in the church and all that, you know what you do? You call it to the floor. Uh, yeah. And you deal with it. You say, hey, we ain't going to stand for that. That's right. And any church that's hiding it, we're going to call you out. Hey, y'all not to be doing that. Amen. Don't leave everything that's right on account of you want to. You know what that, you know, here it is in a nutshell. This is what it is. You're dropping a name and you're blaming it on something else, but you want to get swept up in this ecumenical movement. Wow. Yeah. That's what it is. You don't want to offend nobody because you're getting a payday, amen, you're getting a bigger crowd. Yeah. Amen. By God's grace, we'll never go that route. Amen. 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 And the devil hates us for that. Wow. He hates our guts from that. That's the reason why it's so hard for you at your home to live like a Christian, to raise your family, because everybody ain't doing this. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard raising girls to, to do right and dress modest, keep your phone clean, raising boys to do right, keep your purity. I mean, it's just hard stuff. Right. That's part of being a Bible believer. Right. Amen? We're trying to practice the book. Everybody don't do this. Right. We are, we are workers when it comes. Now, we ain't no different than our forefathers. I'm telling you what, brother. We got our work cut out for us, and if we're going to live that Bible, we're going to be working. 
Oh, yeah. Amen. It's easy to say you're saved. Let's go along with the world. Right. Amen. Amen. Where was we at? John. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Talking about a movement promoting unity between different churches. And all that sounds good and you'll get through under the bus if you say anything about it. Mm -hmm. I heard people stand up in, in Baptist churches for and say, Preacher, we just all need to come together and get along. Yeah, I feel you. You feel that? That's all fuzzy, was it? Yeah. But there's danger in that. Right, uh, you can't do it. Right. You can't do it without dropping the standards of this book. Right. Yep. You can't do it. Yep. Say, preacher, you dogmatic. Well, that's just how. It, that's just Amen. how it is. Amen. I'm gonna give an account to God one day. Not the non-denominations. Not your wife or your grandma that thinks that we hate people. Amen? And that's the way you ought to feel about it. We ain't got to do that with hatred. We do that with love and tell them, hey, man, bro, I just want to be right with God. That's where I'm going to be at. John 17. John 17. Look at verses 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Uh, keep thee. He said, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those who thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. That's what they'll say. Bro, we need to be one. We need to come together. Even the Lord Jesus right here is praying that. Look at verse 21. Verse 21. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one. There we are again. We're one. This Lord Jesus Christ. What are you going to do with that? Even as we are one. In I and them, thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. You know what he said? Hey, look, I want you to look at verses 17. Did we read it? We didn't read it. Here's the part they leave out. That whole message right there where Jesus is praying. What's he say in verse 17? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the Lord's talking about take all those people that believe in me and set them apart. Sanctify them through what? Through thy truth. Here's the problem with coming together with this ecumenical movement. We're going to have to drop truth in order to come together. I can't hook up. Hey, we cannot hook up with people that don't believe the truth. Yeah. That are not going to practice New Testament church discipline and conduct according to the Bible. Right. When it comes to baptism, when it comes to communion. I mean, do you, do you know that these people, most people in our county, when they take communion, that they believe, and they, they're drinking wine, yeah. one thing. But they believe that when they eat the, the bread and drink that wine, that it is actually the actual blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You look at me like I'm crazy. You, you, I, I'll tell you what they believe. That's the reason why we are what we are. Yeah. And we're not messing with that. Amen? Amen. Everybody all right? Amen. I don't hate your kin people. I got Ken Pooper us off the deep end too. You know what we hope? We hope that we can help them. We can teach them some truth. People just go along with the punches, you know, and be, you get raised up, you talk certain things, you just believe it because that's what y'all always been taught. Amen? Amen? Yeah. None of y'all probably, some of y'all probably ever knew what the Lutherans did. They're just good people. Your boss man might be a Lutheran. Amen? Amen. Your buddy might be a AME Zion. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Listen, he said, by the by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Listen, the unity that Christ prayed for is based upon the unity of the Godhead. When he said sanctify them, get them separated, they need to become one. Hey, God's never going to leave the unity that the Godhead has. That's God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. Let me explain that. Listen, whatever the word of God says, the Holy Spirit, God, I, I felt my heart, the Spirit of God uh, told me to, told me to, to, to go down here to this nightclub and, and hang out Friday and Saturday night and then maybe I could well, the, the Bible never said that and so guess what you a liar that wasn't the Holy Spirit that was your own deceitful heart yeah. he said hey he, that unity he's prayed for he's talking about the unity of the Godhead God the Father God the Son God the Holy Ghost 
What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying you're lying because the Word of God, if the Holy, the Holy Spirit's never going to go against the Word of God. Right. Amen. 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 So you tell me that the Spirit of God, you just felt led, and if it goes against that book, you're wrong. Right. You're wrong. You better watch out them spirits. The Bible says try the spirits and see if they be of God. Right. Amen. Amen. You better watch out how you feel. Your feelings will get you messed up. Right. Your feelings get you killed. Amen. Amen. Watch out for your feelings. That's your heart. That's, that's your, the seat of your affections, your emotions. I don't care how you feel or how some deliverance team had made you tingle from the tops of your head to the bottoms of your feet and it just fell all over. I never experienced nothing like that. That's your feelings. Amen. You can do that with red, red wine and a dozen roses. Amen. Yep. Amen. You better believe you can. You better watch your feelings. Right. It'll have you messed up. Who wouldn't want to go to somewhere, some worship center and feel like that every time they walked in the door? Right. Yeah. And nobody ever tell them any different that their feelings is all jacked up. And it's another spirit. Right. Right. The spirit of God and the word of God, the Bible, yeah. and God the Father will always be right in line. Mm -hmm. So yeah. never come to me and do anything. I, I, well, you can do that with church conduct. <laughs> Don't ever tell me God led you to do something and you're going against the order that that Bible said do it. Right. Yep. Amen? Amen? Amen. You take, you take a pastor. Mm -hmm. God, called, God called for a pastor to lead a flock, an under shepherd. Right. Listen, if somebody else gets up here or tries to start absorbing authority over the pastor's position and I say, listen, I'm nobody. I can be replaced. I already know I can be replaced. Amen? Amen? Yeah. If somebody else tries to do it, you know what they're They're out of order. They're out of order. Anybody tries to absorb authority, hey, in this church and take the pastor's place in any kind of capacity, they're out of order. You know why I know? Because the Spirit of God, you say, I just felt led. No, you don't, don't, you don't, don't feel led. Amen. You got to go to the book. We have the written word, right. a more sure word of prophecy. Yep. Stick with the book. Stick with the book. People don't like that. People don't like absolute authorities. Right. Absolute. They don't like it. The unity that Lord Christ, Jesus Christ talking about is based on the Godhead. They always agree, never out of sync, always right down the barrel with the Word of God. They never disagree on the virgin birth. Here's just a few. They never disagree on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what that is? I read some statistics this morning. The deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to hear that word if you've been saved any length of time or get in your Bible or read behind anybody or listen to a preacher. The deity of the Lord Jesus Christ is that he was very God. Amen. Jesus Christ was very God. I told you 52% of American adults, American adults, do not believe that Jesus was God. Amen. Amen. God was manifest in the flesh yeah. and he died for your sins. Amen. Amen? Amen. He was born of a virgin. Amen. And he walked for 33 and a half years. God manifest in the flesh. Yeah. Feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Right. God died on that cross for your sins. Amen. Amen? Amen? Listen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit always agree on the virgin birth yeah. and the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They always agree on salvation by grace alone. They always agree on the priesthood of the believer. You know what the priesthood of the believer is? Is that we have direct access to the throne of God. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. You listen to me? We don't have to come into the temple and go down there to a little box to where a pervert sits with a gown on. Uh, looks like mom and the him papa, amen. That's what somebody said. Hey, and we don't got to tell him none of our secrets, amen. You're going to tell that man about your wife. About your daughters. Yeah. Not me. Amen. We, you know what the Bible teaches us? You know what God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and, and, God, and God, the Word of God, the Father, and the Son teaches? However I put them, the Trinity, they teach the priesthood of the believer. Right. Mm -hmm. That means that I don't have to have a priest. Right. You, listen, you don't have to tell anybody your sins. You don't have to confess to anybody. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we'll confess our sins, that's to God. Yep. He is faithful just to forgive us of our sins right, right. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right, he said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Not if we sin, go down to the Pope, give them uh, $350 so they can buy them a fifth of liquor and hang out with your wife and the rest of the ladies tonight. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 
Don't you got to confess to nobody. Right. I'll tell them to stay out of my business. Amen. Amen. And some more stuff. Amen. Listen, we we have, according to the word of God, the priesthood of the believers. Amen. We mess up. We got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We already been condemned in our conscience. And you know what we do? We fall on our knees and as soon as as you fall on your knee, knees in Jesus' name. The Bible says if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Yeah. Hey, faster than the speed of light, you're before the throne of God. Amen. That's what you ought to do. When you bow your head, you ought to picture yourself. Try to picture and imagine yourself being at the foot of the throne. Amen. He said we can come boldly. That ain't not arrogant boldly either. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And that's what you do. You have a priesthood. Priesthood of the believer. You can also lead others to Christ. Amen. You can also do that. Listen, they agree on believer's baptism. Here's a better definition for ecumen ecumenism. That word we try to say, that movement. A movement promoting unity between different churches and groups. We had that much, but here's what they don't want you to hear. By diminishing or ignoring the very words of God. So let's all come together and whatever we got to lay off to the side, do away so we can all get along, agree to disagree, but don't worry about, hey, just do away with them truths so we can all get along. Right. Yeah. That's what they want. You, We can't do that. Right. We can't. If you do that, you're not right with God and you're not a Bible-believing Christian. Right. Those people are not Bible believers. Right. Amen. This preacher is a Bible believer. You are Bible believers. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? As long as you conduct your life according to the Word of God. Ecumenism has gained a foothold in many churches. Amen. Clearly for no other reason but giving in to the movement of coming together. Don't give me your, your trash about why you left the Baptist church. I won't hear it. I won't hear it. <clears throat> and just like I said, if we're gonna 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 point out that there's uh, sin in the Baptist church and there's wrongdoing in the Baptist church. That's what they do. They need to preach on it. That's how you keep it clean, keep a standard, is you take a stand against it. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's how we end up where we are. Yeah. Separated with the Word of God is because we took a stand against it. Mm -hmm. I'll give you just a couple more, a couple more facts on the Lutherans and we'll shut it down. They teach that baptism, at baptism, people receive not only faith, but they receive regeneration. Right. Now listen, regeneration, you, you've heard me say it before, we don't need reformation. We don't need rehabilitation. We need regeneration. Right. That means God puts a power back into you to come alive. Right. He's yeah. made you alive. You were dead in trespasses and sins. You had to quicken who were dead in trespasses and sins. They believe when that baby, just an infant, when he gets that, that water put on his head, that he's regenerated on the inside. Mm -hmm. Amen. You remember God told Adam, said the day he ever just surely die. Yeah. Now every born, everybody that's born after Adam because of one man's sin and entered into the world. Yep. And death passed upon all men for all have sinned. Everybody in here is dead spiritually when they're born. Yeah. When you put that water on that baby's head, it regenerates them. Spiritually brings him back to life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Puts a faith in him that when he's 12, 13 years old, he says, man, I'm, let me tell you what God done for me when I got sprinkled. He didn't realize he got sprinkled. Let me tell you what happened to me when I got sprinkled. Mm -hmm. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> they baptize a person or infant by pouring water on the head. And I said this, they believe that taking Holy Communion, they eat and drink the true body and blood of Christ himself in the sacrament of the Eucharist. That sounds just like the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. That's the Lutheran Church I'm talking about. Sounds just like the Catholic Church. So by God's grace, we're going to continue. That was just kind of an introduction to let you know why we're not anything else. And you get into, when you get into uh, uh, Pentecostals and all these not, all this new stuff that's came up in the last hundred years, that is just stuff that has broke off mostly. It's a mixture of people that have broke off and went off the deep end from either Bible-believing churches or either from Protestant churches. I mean, somebody just wants to start their own, start, you know, untucking their shirts and not wearing ties and playing worldly music in the church. They'll break off from anything. Yeah. I mean, there's some Catholics that's probably done that. Amen. That's just all this other slobber that you got in the last hundred years. Amen. 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 I'm not telling you they ain't good people come out of some of these places. 
People's got saved in some of these places. I'm trying to tell you why we're Bible-believing Baptists. And it's because of what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if y'all got anything to say about it, say it before we leave. Amen. Don't go home and say it. That uh, go on preacher, he's... I want to hear it. I like a good fight anyway. Amen? <clears throat> All hearts clear. I hope you learned something tonight. Amen. It's a little scattered, but I hope you learned something. By the grace of God, Wednesday we'll get back into it. Amen. All right, don't forget to sign up. Don't forget to sign up for Friday night. Don't forget your sleeping bag and your towel. Amen. All right, let's dismiss in prayer. This Friday we're going to shine a light. The following Friday is going to be our harvest night. It's going to be down at our place. Should I say my address? Are we online? All right, they cut it They know where you live already. Huh? They already know where you live. They got me more, ain't they? Yeah. Well, it's all right. They don't know what's going to do. <laughs> cut it back on. Send all donations to 399. <laughs> <laughs> got a prayer line going on down there. I'm like... <laughs> We'll hear you for $75 plus tax. <laughs> but uh, anyway, just be praying about that. Thank the Lord we can get, get together and do things. Amen. Amen. So that'll be the 28th. 28th. All right. All right, y'all invite somebody to church. Amen. Looks like you've been doing a good job. Bro. Brother Stephen, dismiss us in prayer, brother. Oh, we love you. Just want to thank you again for the opportunity.